people look at stories through different lenses. I have my own take on some of these trending issues. Hi, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to In Case You Missed It. Hello and welcome to another episode of In Case You Missed It on Sportsmax and Scene TV. Today's guest, he plays for the Jamaica Reggae Boys. He's also a member of the Anand Gardens team that placed third in the just concluded Jamaica Premier League season. Let's welcome to the studio, Kahim Dixon. How are you doing, Kahim? Did you find the studio easily? Yes. Yeah, so it was easy to get here. And are you happy? Because, you know, the Jamaica Premier League season has just ended. You played for Annette and you finished third. Yes, I'm happy, but not as, not as much. You wanted first. Won the league, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how would you think the entire season was for you when you look back now? You know, the season was excellent for me. You know, I put in a lot of work from school to training, you know, help push me a lot. Yeah, that must be difficult, trying to balance school, training, and then national duty. Um, in the JPL, that third place match, you had two goals and an assist in that third place playoff. And what's for sure is you did play a crucial role for your team and you were able to defeat Waterhouse 5-1. How important was it to you, Kahim Dixon, that you contributed for your team in such a big match? You know, it was important to me that I can contribute for my team, help, helping them go into the Caribbean Cup sheet. So, you know, I told the lads Saturday in the training that, hey, we will be at the club sheet, you don't need to win. Yeah, and of course, you were right because 5-1 against Waterhouse. And Waterhouse, a very good team, so you yes. really had to play well to defeat them. Yes. All right, so for our viewers who didn't know, it was your first time playing the JPL and you finished the season with six goals. When you look back now, is there any area, Kahim, that you feel you want to work on for next season? Yes, there are always area to work on, always area for improvement. So, yeah. Anything you want to tell us? or? No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he doesn't want to tell us, but what's for sure is you're going to work on it and come back stronger next yes. JPL season. And what are you looking forward to most for the next season of the JPL? This one was really good. I enjoyed it. Got the opportunity to come to a couple matches. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to win the JPL next season with Arne Gatti. All right. And, you know, Kahim, do you think, based on what you saw from this team, that Arne has what it takes to win this JPL? Yes, they have one, what it takes, but once they have the mindset to all right, and you know, you're 19 years of age. Um, when did you start playing football? About seven. I what? played under 30. Okay, and how did you know or when did you realize that, you know what, football is what I want to do professionally? At 11 years old, playing for the boys on under 30. Okay, and so what happened during that match that made you feel like I can do this, I can do it for a living, I can make <laughs> money out of it. Coming off the bench, scoring a hat-trick, advancing to the semi-final to play against an Arborview team at the youth level. Wow, that must be a dream come true. And when you say that, you know, at such, such a young age, doing brilliant things for your team, it's as if this was meant for you, Kaim. What does a week look like though? Because you know many times people watch what you do but they don't realize the sacrifices. What does a week look like when it comes to training? You told me you go to school as well. You recently got that national call up. How does your week look? A uh, week look busy but I can cope with it. I try to balance it. What time do you wake up? I wake up at 6.30 for training. Right. Players report to the club at 7.45. Right, and then what happens after? After went went home, get ready for school. <laughs> and then school is finished. Do you have training again in the evening? No. Do you do gym work as well? Yes. So Kim, let's now talk about your debut for the Reggae Boys. Firstly, where were you when you got the message that you know you're going to be called up to the big big team? 
I, I was at the JFF office. Okay. And so me, the person, approached and said, hey, did you know you got called for the <laughs> reggae boys? I said, no. They say yes. Then I started to cry. So wait, so the media knew before you came? Nobody yes. told you? No. All right. And who was the first person after, you know, it was an emotional moment, of course, because it's something that you would have been working on. Who did you share the news with first? My mother and my father. What did they say? They were happy. Yeah, really, yeah. really happy, of course. And I know the entire of Jamaica continues to support you. Um, I even heard some of the team here in our studio saying you remind them of Erling Haaland. Then the next <laughs> one said Kylian Mbappe. Which one would you rather? Kylian Mbappe. Oh my, I love Erling Haaland though, but that's all right. Both are very skilled and you know, you as well, Kaim, a big, big baller. So, if a national call-up was not enough for you, you couldn't help yourself because you went to my country and you decided to score against them, Trinidad and Tobago. That was in March 2024. So, how did you feel scoring on your debut? You know, just making that instant impact. You know, I, I feel like the happiest per person on the earth. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, I scored my debut for my country, which I was dreaming about. So, you know, it's a big, big thumbs up to myself. After you did that, what did coach and your team say to you? They went they were and say, hey, you, you scored on your debut, <laughs> give yourself a clap. <laughs> and you know, I think it was such a big deal for you because you know when you enter a new setup, it's a different feeling. It's natural to feel a bit nervous, whether or not you know you feel like if you belong there. After you scored that, you felt in your brain that, you know what, this is for me, right? Yes. It <laughs> But where it was, it started from the mindset. Yeah. Uh, mind, I will have the mindset, hey, I belong here, no matter what the situation is. And even if you're younger than all of the players. Yes, I always said I belong here. Exactly. And you know, you also have a CONCACAF Nations League third place medal, <laughs> your first medal for Jamaica. I have to say 2024 has been really good to you so far. Yes. And when you got the medal, of course you didn't get to play, but you got the opportunity to be around be the around. team. Right. Yeah. You know, it was a happy moment. You know, I've, I've, I didn't play, but it feel, I felt like I played. <laughs> you know, having a third place medal is a big feeling yeah. in the US, my first time. Yeah, must be good, of course. Everything yes. has been working out for you. So, so happy. Would you say that you've been settling good with the national team or has it been a bit difficult? No, not saying difficult. I think I'm settling because yeah. the player welcomed me. Yeah, they accept me as I am, as a young kid, you I, know. I mean, you're scoring goals. Why would they not accept <laughs> <laughs> How has it been, though, working with head coach Jaime Hall Grimson? I've had him on this show as well, you know, talking to him. One of the things he speaks about is, you know, the talent here in Jamaica. How has your experience been working with coach? You know, he's a pretty good coach. He's a pretty... Even the goal in Trinidad, it's what he showed us showed us in the changing room before the game that that's what the goal built up on, built really? up from yes wow so coach he has his tactics spot on do you yes. think you can learn a lot along yes. coach yes i can learn a lot from the coaching yeah and you know you have the opportunity to do that very soon because we have world cup qualifiers starting very soon um have you started your preparations for that this year and are you excited yes um I, i've started my preparation i've started going to the gym, doing my personal work by myself. Yeah. yeah, and you say that, and you know what I remember, just now you spoke about it's all in your mind, and you know, you're telling yourself that you belong here. How much of your performance, the one that we see on the field, how much credit do you give to your mind and how you're able to stay calm under pressure circumstances? 70% to yeah. my mind, yes. I think what I put on the field is come from my mind. Like, I'm just out here playing, playing on the street. That's what I tell myself anytime I'm playing. Oh, my. And, you know, one of the things I always try to get into, like, athletes' head, right? There are some players, before a match, they're, like, running around, playing soca music, dancehall music, doing the most, just to get themselves in the game. Then there are some, like Erlen Hallen. I know he meditates a lot. There are some that, you know, listen to calm music. Some of them don't even speak to anybody before the match. Is there anything that you do that's special? <laughs> yes, I, I listen to motivational speech and a special song that I like. 
Yeah, you want to tell me a song? Yes, Massacre, Massacre Special. Oh my, that's a big, big song. I like Massacre as well. So, you know, a lot of his music, very, very inspirational. And it's exactly yes. what you want to feel when you're going, especially into a big competition. Yes. So there's one match. It's slated for Kingston, Jamaica on June 6th. That's your home. So what would it mean to you if you're given the opportunity to play at home and not only play, to score, Kaim? You know, it would be a wonderful feeling first time playing at home in the national colour. So, you know, yeah. But I got to let the court do it, decide and pick the team. All right, well, we're just hoping for the best. We can keep our fingers crossed and see what happens. <laughs> yes. Anything, though, Kaim, that you want to say to the fans who are watching the show right now and they're still not sure if they're going to come to watch the match? Yes. Um, to my fellow Jamaicans, please come and support Reggae Boys on June the 6th. It will be an epic game. We all do it for you guys. Well, it's now time for the most exciting part of today's interview. It's rapid fire time. So, Kaim, I'll ask you a question and you say the first word or phrase that comes to mind. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Favourite footballer? Shaman Nichols. Who's the best footballer you've played with on your team? Fabian Reed. Okay. What's your favourite goal, the favourite goal that you scored? Too many to count? <laughs> <laughs> my first goal against Trinidad. Oh, my. Your favorite Jamaican dish? I can I like that as well. Pizza or pasta? Pasta. Favorite parish in Jamaica? Clarendon. Mm. The most used app on your phone? YouTube. Oh, you look at YouTube videos. Are you looking at footballers all the time? Yeah. <laughs> favorite type of music? Reggae. Night in or night out? Night in. Barcelona or Real Madrid? Barcelona. All the time. <laughs> well, before you leave me in studio, let's head across now to social media to see what's been happening. So we have this post from the official JFF. They said, reggae boys in recent times to score on their international debut. Do you see that name? 2024, Kate yeah. Dixon. <laughs> then there is Justin McMaster in 2022, Jamal Lowe in 2021. Kimar Beckford 2020. What about Bobby Reed in 2019? Daniel Green, Jeremy Lynch, Jorginho James. How do you feel, Kaim, seeing your name among some of the best? No, it, no, we no, know. I'm feeling happy. Yeah. Knowing that at 19 years old, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm among the best yeah. in the country. And the scoring, your debut goal must have felt really, really good, as you said. Let's watch another tweet and see what's happening here. So again, the JFF says, this is the timeline of Kaim Dixon. So in March 1st of 2024, you scored. That was your debut. That 1-0 win over Trinidad and Tobago in March 3rd. That's just a few days later. Your second appearance for Jamaica. March 21st, you made your Nations League debut and your third cap for Jamaica. Then what about March 24? You walk away with your first, first medal. medal. <laughs> March has been your month. When is your birthday? October. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How do you feel seeing? You know, Kaim, one of the things that really warms my heart is the fact that a young person can be so focused and just be dominating. Just the fact that you walked into our studio and the amount of love that you received from everybody. <laughs> how do you feel looking back at March? Oh, I feel happy knowing that I can keep my mindset from the school boy level yeah. into the international level, still scoring, so I feel happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, so proud of you. Let's take this one now. This one is my favorite. So we have this picture of Shensia. She's one of my favorite dance hall performers. And, you know, she's gone into different genres of music. Just, just a brilliant woman when it comes to her craft. She's wearing the new kit for the Jamaica Reggae Boys and, you know, she looks really good. Are you excited to wear the new kit? I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good and she makes it even look better. Yeah, we're going to make it look the best. 
Yeah, and we're gonna rock it. <laughs> rock it and score in it. Score. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Kaim, you know, it has been the utmost pleasure chatting with you here on In Case You Missed It. I want to thank you for visiting me in studio and I'm wishing you the best of luck in your next match. Thank you very much. All right. Well, viewers, that's a wrap for today's show. Be sure to like, share and comment. And I'll see you in our next episode. Bye for now.